Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about additional domain controller. So till now uh, we have already uh, discussed about a domain, like how is the domain configured. When you install Active Directory services in a workgroup of server operating system, it becomes a server called DC and whatever name you give, it becomes the name of the logical structure that is domain. That is when you configure a DC, it logically forms a secure boundary called as a domain. Whatever name you give, that will be the name of the particular domain. And we have also discussed how to configure the clients and member servers. Now, we have everything, we are going to manage everything sitting on the server. So we have seen how to create the user accounts, how the users can log into the client systems, how to define some permissions on the resources which are being made available for the users, how we can define some profiles based on the requirement, or roaming or mandatory. But everything we are managing centrally from the server. Now, let us say like what happens if all of a sudden my server crashes. If my server crashes, whatever may be the size of the network, the complete network is going to be down. The reason the centralized database is not available, users can log in, the profiles will not be loaded, the permissions that are set will not work. You, first of all, if users are not able to log in, then what resources are they going to access available over the network, right? So now, in this scenario, if DC is crashing, the complete network is affected. So now as an administrator, we should not wait till the DC is going to go down. Now, in order to avoid such scenarios and all, when the domain controller is available itself, for the domain controller, we should configure a backup server called as additional domain controller. So additional domain controller, this is also a server, so it should also be a server operating system and we need to install Active Directory services. So when we install Active Directory services, it is going to copy the same database whatever we have in the domain controller to the additional domain controller and whatever objects you have in the DC, same objects are going to be available here also. Means domain controller is also a read and write copy, the master copy. Additional domain controller is also a read and write copy, it is a backup copy. So whatever you are doing in the domain controller will be replicated to additional domain controller and whatever you are doing in additional domain controller is also going to get updated in the domain controller. Means both are going to have the same database. Now any time like something happens for the domain controller then the, use, the users can still be authenticated with the help of the additional domain controller. Means the network is not going to be done. In the earlier scenario, if the ADC is not there, if the DC crashes, complete network is getting affected. But now, if I have an additional domain controller, if something happens to the DC also, I can still manage my network with the help of ADC. In the meanwhile, I can make my domain control up by checking what is the problem, actual problem in the server. But if I find that if my DC is completely crashed, I cannot recover it back, I can work on the ADC with the ADC up to an extent, but I cannot make that as a permanent solution. So in such scenarios, I need to make this additional domain controller as a domain controller. So how and all we'll be discussing later on. Like I need to make my backup server as my main server, then configure another server as an additional domain controller and my network is set up as it is to have my main server, backup server and my clients. But why I should not depend upon the additional domain controller? I said like if DC goes down, I can depend upon ADC but that should not be the permanent solution. This is because there are certain things which are active only in the domain controller. So what are these? So that's nothing but we have something called roles. Roles of active directory. So what are the roles of active directory? We say that DC and ADC have the same information. Then why is that the roles are available only in the server? This is the domain controller and this is the additional domain controller and there are some clients and all, right? So all these are in the domain zoom.com. But we say that if something happens with DC, we can depend upon this up to an extent but not as a permanent solution. The reason, the roles, whatever we are talking, is available in both but they are active only in the domain controller. So the roles are active only in the domain controller. Now if at all anything goes down with this, the one which is going to have the roles is not available. So you will not be able to do all the configurations just with the additional domain controller. So if this is permanently not available, these roles, the roles whatever were there in the DC, the information is available in ADC, 
we need to make them forcibly active. So once we make them forcibly active, the additional domain controller becomes a domain controller and all the roles are available in this now. So this is the main server. We just have to configure one backup server for this. So what are those roles of Active Directory? So let us discuss the roles of Active Directory.